let's talk about some of the basic sewing tools you're going to need. Now, depending on the project that you're working on, these things might change. You may need to add a zipper, uh, elastic, you might need to add uh, some buttons, but in general there are very basic tools that you will need just about every time that you sew. Now you're always going to need an iron because after you sew a seam, you want to press your seams. You're of course going to need a sewing machine. You're going to need scissors. I like to use two different scissors, one for paper and one for fabric. Mixing the two will dull your blades. Now depending on the fabric that you're using, if let's say you're using a cotton fabric or a very basic fabric, nothing fancy, so you might want to use a universal needle which works for just about anything. And let's say if you're using something stretch like a knit, you want to make sure that you're using a stretch needle that will help in the sewing. Now it's really handy to have a chalk roller or marking pen in case you need to add length or make alterations to your pattern and you want to do them directly onto your fabric, this is a great tool to have. A seam ripper is crucial in case you make a mistake and you want to rip out your seams. Pattern uh, weights are really great because they hold your pattern onto your fabric as you're cutting. I use big washers from my local home improvement store. They're about 20 cents each and they work like a charm. You're going to need some pins, coordinating thread that matches your fabric. You're going to need a tape measure and a seam gauge. Now I really like this because it helps me not just with my seam allowances but with my hem allowances and it's really nice to have really close to your sewing machine as you're sewing. Then you're going to probably be using some form of interfacing. Now interfacing comes in various weights, anywhere, anywhere from very lightweight to medium weight to heavy to ultra heavy um, and you're going to be choosing your interfacing based on the fabric that you're choosing. Now you don't want to change the hand of your fabric you just want to add stability to certain areas like let's say if you have plackets or you have a collar or waistband or cuffs you want to add stability but not change the weight of your fabric so for example if I'm using a lightweight fabric I like to use a very lightweight interfacing if I'm using a medium weight fabric I use a medium weight interfacing they come fusible and non-fusible fusible means that you iron it on to your fabric turning your piece of fabric and your interfacing into one piece and some are non-fusible, which means you would need to sew your interfacing onto your fabric as one piece before continuing. Let's talk about laying out your fabric. Now in general, when you go to the fabric store, the fabric is either folded onto itself, right sides facing or wrong sides facing. It's folded the length of the fabric and rolled onto a bolt. When they unroll your fabric and you cut however many yards you need, you're probably going to get it home and it's either going to have the right side facing up or the wrong side facing up. Now when laying out for cutting, you want to make sure that your right sides are facing and that you are looking at the wrong side of your fabric so that when we make markings, we're making them on the wrong side of the fabric and not the right side of the fabric. You also want to make sure that you fold your fabric the length of the fabric with salvage edges meeting. Salvage edges are these finished edges that you see on your fabric. When working with lining, the same rules apply. You want to fold it the length of your fabric with right sides facing, salvage edges meeting. Here's a general guide when cutting out the correct pattern size. Now I know that this is difficult for some because we're used to thinking that the back of the envelope gives you the size that you're going to need to cut. Now that's not necessarily true. It does give you the size for the pattern you should buy, meaning if you fall within this range back here between the 6 through 14 size pattern envelope, then you would buy the pattern envelope size 6 to 14 because you know you fall within those measurements. If you're above that and you need to cut the 14 through 20 or whatever size it comes in, then you would buy the other envelope that has size 14 through 16, 18 or 20 depending on how high it goes. That is not necessarily the pattern size you're going to cut. Now um, let me try and explain that. Now the pattern envelope in the back says that for a size 8, the hip is 33 and a half inches. Well, if you fall within that, then you would probably think, okay, I'm going to cut a size 8. But depending on the amount of ease that you want, wearing ease is, means the extra amount of fabric that's put into your garment so that you can move comfortably. You might like loose fitting clothes. You might like um, a more tailored look or a more form fitting look. So what you want to do 
is you want to actually cut your pattern based on the finished measurements printed on the tissue paper. Now that 33 and a half hip for a size 8 is actually, after the garment is sewn, a finished measurement of 36 and a half. That means there's three inches of ease into that pattern. Now you might not want three inches of ease around your hip. So instead you might want to go down and cut the 35 and a half inch hip, which is actually a size six. So before cutting out your pattern pieces, I want you to make sure that you follow the finished measurements on the tissue paper and not the printed measurements on the back of the envelope. When you open your tissue paper up, it's going to have different lines. It'll have a size line for 8 or 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. You're going to cut the size that you have chosen from the finished measurements and you're going to cut around those lines for all of your pattern pieces. Now let's say if you're working on view A or view B or view C or whatever it is, you want to get into the habit of reading your pattern pieces completely on the inside of your pattern envelope. they give you a guide. It tells you if you're doing view B, you're going to need all of these pattern pieces. You're going to need pattern piece, you know, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 12. And so those are the pattern pieces you're going to cut that correspond to the view that you're trying to make. There's going to be, you know, a long dress and a short dress. And if you're doing the short dress, then you're going to cut all of the pieces for the short, short dress. Now it's easier sometimes if you make a little, take a little highlighter and you highlight all of the pattern pieces so that you don't forget any as you're going along. There are a couple more things that you want to make sure that you look at when reviewing your pattern pieces. Your pattern piece tells you everything you need to know. It tells you how many you need to cut. It tells you if you're cutting it out of fabric or lining or just fabric or just lining or if you're cutting it just out of interfacing. So for example, for the skirt it says skirt front B. So that lets me know that I'm doing view B, and it tells me that I need to cut two while my fabric is folded in half lengthwise with salvage edges meeting. So if I lay my pattern piece onto my fabric and I cut around it, when I open it, I have two pieces. Now this one says front bodice lining cut two. Well, it's just a lining, so I need to cut it only out of my lining fabric and not out of my fashion fabric. And then let's say you might come across a piece that says front interfacing and you need to cut two. Well, that means you only cut two out of interfacing, not out of fabric, not out of lining, just the interfacing. So get into the habit of fully reading your pattern pieces before you start laying and cutting. Let's talk about your grain line. Now on your uh, pattern pieces, you're going to see a line, right, that looks like this with an arrow. And this is your grain line. This lets you know exactly how to lay your pattern pieces onto your fabric. Now I can give you a one hour class on grain lines because it can get very technical, but we're not going into all that right now. I just want to make sure you have a general understanding. Your fabric is folded, right sides facing, lengthwise with selvage edges meeting. You want your grain line to be parallel to your fabric. So you want to always make sure that that line is where it's supposed to be. Now for my pattern piece, I want to make sure that it's parallel, and so this one is. For example, if you're looking at this one, you might run across one that is not just up and down, but instead looks a little bit on the bias. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you align that pattern piece. Let me move this one out of the way. So that instead of, you might think that you're going to place your pattern piece like this, you're going to make sure that this arrow is actually parallel to your fabric and you want to make sure that you do that for all of your pattern pieces. Now when you're going to cut out your pattern pieces, we're making sure that we're really fully reading all of the information that is on the, the tissue paper. And so if this says that this is my lining and I need to cut two, then I'm going to place it on my fabric, right sides facing, lengthwise, selvage edges meeting, and I'm going to use my pattern weights to hold my pattern in place while I cut. And when you cut, you want to make sure that your blade stays on your table. Don't lift while cutting. Don't shift. Don't try and move your pattern to accommodate you. Try to work around your pattern piece. The less you can move your pattern piece, the more accurate your cutting will be. You're going to cut around your pattern piece. Once your pattern piece is cut, 
you want to make sure that you transfer all of your markings and your dots onto your fabric. Now, the little triangles that you see on your pattern pieces, these are called notches. Now, the notches, the dots, the small dots, the big dots, they all mean something and they help when you're constructing your garment because it will let you know that this double notch corresponds to the double notch on, let's say, a sleeve or whatever other pattern piece you're putting together. And once they align, you know that you're going about it the right way. If you don't transfer those markings or don't transfer your notches and then you start sewing and the pattern instructions say, you know, start sewing and then stop at the small dot and you're like, I don't have a small dot. Then you have to go back, look at your pattern piece, find the dot. So you want to do it, you know, in the beginning. You want to make it as easy as possible for yourself. So what I like to do is I like to locate all of my notches and I just make a tiny little snip into all of those little triangles. I make about a quarter inch slit. Smaller than that doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you can see it. And once you have all of your notches snipped, the next thing you want to do is make sure that you transfer any darts, any dots that you see. So this is a bust dart and you see it has two legs. So if you have a bust dart uh, or a waist dart, what you want to do is I like to make a little snip into the dart legs. So I will find the size that I'm cutting. So in this instance, I would be doing uh, size eight and I'm going to follow that line and then I'm going to make a snip at the dart leg and then I'm going to find the other dart leg and I'm going to make another little snip and this will just help me when I'm folding that dart to sew it and as you go along you'll start to learn what all those things are. Now the dart has a little dot at the tip this lets me know that this is where the dart will end. So what I like to do to make it easy on myself is I take a pin, I put the pin in to the number 8 through all layers, I remove the pattern weight I make a small marking where that pin is on both sides. And since we folded our fabric right sides facing, we're marking on the wrong side of our fabric and not the right side. One last thing I want to mention about cutting out your pattern pieces. Now I hope that you've now heard me say it enough that you want to make sure that you read all of the information on your pattern pieces before you start to cut them out. Now let's say that one of the pattern pieces says that you're going to place it on the fold. Now this one doesn't but we're going to pretend. What that means is that you're going to place that edge along the fold of your fabric and if your fabric is, come on say it with me, folded in half lengthwise with salvage edges meeting, then you're going to place the the pattern piece directly onto the fold of your fabric and you're going to cut around it so that when you open this pattern piece up it's one full piece as opposed to cutting around it and creating two pieces.